Hey guys, Emma again. Welcome back to the spare room. This is the next installment of this little engine, the Myford Boy engine. I'm going to machine the flywheel, which is a nice zinc aluminium casting. What I've done is I've got a shell out of a roller bearing, a tapered roller bearing. Uh, nice ground parallel. really useful parallel spacer for a job like this put him in the center and sat this in there is a gap there it's not enough but I haven't got long enough bolts really to put another one in or I would so we're going to leave with that that's lined up somewhere near on these lines here and I've just cut two little plates to go on there and I've made two nuts out of a piece of flat with a tapped hole in them to screw in. So that's bolted down nice and firm on the spokes. There's a gap all around. And it should be fairly easy to get him somewhere near on centre. So let's put him on the lathe. Excuse the washing machine in the background there, guys. It's, um... That's set up pretty good and a fairly simple setup. It's within about... Look, if we check this side and this side, it's within about a thou. And if we check this side and this side, it's within about a thou. Because it's a casting and because there's differences in the sand and stuff, it's not going to be perfect and smooth all the way around. And there's bumps all around it that are probably 10 thou high. So... I set him up here and here and he's pretty close and set him up here and here and he's pretty close and it's not far out so what we're going to do is machine the outside and the front we're going to center drill him and put a center in him before we even start machining this so it doesn't move is probably a good idea and then we're going to drill him and ream him and turn him around and do the other side And here we got a blunt tool, so I better fix that. So, a bit better tool there with some nice sharp angles on it. Seems to be cutting it better. I cleaned up the outside, and my foot boy was right. Uh, the castings are beautiful, they machine like magic. Just zinc in aluminium. I've trued this up, but I'm truing the face up. It's got a bit of a peak in the middle, uh, this shape, because of the way the draft angle for the casting is cast in, the, the pattern's cast in two bits. If you haven't had a look, go and have a look at Myford Boy's videos about casting these castings. They're fantastic videos, and it shows you pretty well what what the process is that he goes through to make these castings they are quite involved and how they're made it'll give you a bit more of an understanding of the shapes of it and what, what they are actually and the machining operations to finish it I guess so that's cleaning up in the middle there but not on the edges so we're just going to go slowly because this is quite a big diameter, it takes a little bit more horsepower to turn. So I've slowed this down a little bit. On the belts. And that should give me... A 
a little bit more power transmission to, to turn this casket. So we've got a bit of a hole or an inclusion here on the rim of this flywheel. Um, this happens with castings. I think it'll clean up out of there. But I don't know whether it's a drill shaving or something that's gotten the metal. Or whether it's just a hole. I've got a feeling it's probably an inclusion. We're getting a bit of a we're getting a bit of a bump as it goes past and it's wrecking our finish, but I'm going to keep going and see if this will clean up. I reckon another half a millimetre or something is probably going to come out of there. So that's just something that happens with castings. There it is. Now we've got a bit of a, probably a hard spot. This is right where the the well come in and the vent for the, the casting probably to fill it and I'm wondering whether we might have a cold spot here or a, hard, or a spot that's cooled a bit quick or a chilled spot. This is quite hard. What I've done is filed that back flat. Right there so you can see it. I've filed a flat back on here so that I'm not actually cutting against that and I'm just going to clean it up so we should there's a little pinhole there, whatever's in it, I'm not sure. Maybe it's end off a drill or something. Worst case scenario, but it is pretty hard and I've sharpened the drill the tool a few times. Like I said, this is what you get when you're machining castings. You really don't know what's inside. And as far as cleaning up nice and everything else, it's really a pretty good casting. So we're gonna cut our losses here and and deal with this problem and there are ways to deal with them and it won't turn out too bad but any casting kit will be like that and I know a friend who's been gifted a set of castings for a little mill engine, a steam engine which were cast at a foundry in Sydney I know and I think he's going to have a lot more problems than I'm going to have with these so Let's keep going and just see if this is going to clean up. So lots of fine cuts and sharpen the tool a few times and this is cleaned up alright. It's got a little mark there that you can see but you can't really feel. Um, just in the side there where whatever that is was in there. I like the finish straight off the tool so I'm not going to try and sand it or try and fix it or camouflage it or anything. I'm going to leave it in there. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. It's down a little bit more than I sort of had expected to, to take off it, but that won't hurt either. There's not really a critical component. Next job is to drill a hole through it and run a quarter inch reamer through it. So there you go, that's one side machined up. I've faced this and I've bored him and reamed him and I've Face this over, you can still see that little inclusion there, and I think that's probably what it is. You can't feel it, and I'm going to let it be. I think it's going to be plenty good enough. But if you really look, you can see it. Um, I guess that's a lesson to not be too complacent with jobs. You think, oh, that's going to be fairly straightforward and easy, but it never is. But um, this has still got a burr around here that wants coming off here and probably just a bit of emery paper to clean that off and we're going to turn him around and we're going to set him up again and machine the other side and we're about done with the flywheel I still got to have a grub screw in there but that's not a huge deal either so the last major machining job here to set this up and I've just used a couple of bits of wet and dry paper again to stop it slipping and a couple of bolts and I've bolted that straight on the face plate nicely so there should be no run out at all on that. This way it doesn't matter a lot um, 
it's gonna vibrate a bit if it's not exactly not pretty close that's within about three thou and it's good enough we're not machining on on the outside edge anywhere so I'm gonna just clean that one up and that up and take him out again And it hasn't quite cleaned up. There's a couple of little holes and hollows there, so we're going to take another cut. So last job is to drill a, a grub screw hole. I've just set this up in the bias and I've put a block under there about the right angle. It doesn't matter very much as long as it's on top. The sender punched him, put a bias on this, put a clamp on this so it doesn't slip. Simple as that. It is easy to tap him and put a little 3mm grub screw in him and that's the flywheel pretty much finished. So thanks for watching guys and don't forget to like, subscribe and be kind to each other. We'll do some more soon.